hamınlanın, hamımızdan çıldık, çıldın ki ilik hayırlı olsun. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to be here today. Bugün biz tarihi ahmiyet ki ige, naite birleşken devlet teşkilatının müşteri cihan içi vakt kavakta da biz mutfun dünyadaki erkilik cancilleri, muşu küs teşkilatının bir yer ekilişi bilen bir de oturmadımız. And uh, it's truly my honor to be among so many fellow human rights activists today, having this uh, rather historic, I would say, a parallel conference uh, uh, in New York, uh, while the UN is having its own General Assembly, where a lot of human rights issues are not discussed. Diktatörler ve başka devletler bile yer şartının takdiri kandak başka tırvat kambosa, biz bu yer şartını demokratiyeye erkilik açıkış için While a lot of dictators at the UN General Assembly, they are trying to justify the massive and egregious human rights violations of the oppressed peoples in their own countries. Uh, we are doing our best to expose them and to promote and defend the rights of the oppressed and their human rights. Biz müşü otta qallanın köp qismi bütün diktatör dövlətlərinin azab okuvetlərini, turmullarının, qinaşlarının Uh, and I could see among us there are so many who were politically imprisoned uh, by the authoritarian and dictatorial regimes, who are tortured, and who still, in spite of all the suffering, are here today to speak truth to dictators. Bizni muşu dünyadaki kişilik hukuk teşkilatları ve demokratiyanı suyduğun muşundak teşkilatla ve halkla demokratiye ve kişilik hukuk cankçilleri muşundak faaliyetlerini eppirip kutuldurup çıktı. And uh, I could cite myself as a great example of, of, uh, of a political dissident uh, who, whose life was saved precisely by the hard work of people like you who work for human rights organizations and freedom-loving peoples in the Western democracies who care about suffering in uh, authoritarian states. Bizden muş izilgen halkımız üçün, milletimiz üçün ve başkalar üçün avaz buluş şart şaraitimizni ve şu erkilikimizni muş demokratiye erkilik cancilleri bizden kolumuzga etmez. Bu musa me Allah kacan xtay turmusta ölüp gitettim bugün bir yerde bamaydı. And I could speak today uh, in this free country uh, without fear of the truth of what is happening in my country is because my life was saved by those who cared about human rights and cared about political prisoners like me. Ben yukarıda anladım. Biz, ben Uyghur, ben Uyghurların dert için avaz bop kaldım. Uyghur halkımda sözle vardı ben. Lekin İran bozsun, Pakistan bozsun, Meyli Xitay hükümeti bozsun, meyli Tibet bozsun, meyli Mongol bozsun, meyli Koreya bozsun. Diktatör devletlerinin hepsinin kıyınaş, tutuş, bastırış, öldürüş, dini erkeği kemsitişi op okşaş bulu diken. And uh, certainly I'm the representative of the Uyghur people here today, but after hearing testimonies after testimonies, whether it's about the repression of different religious groups or the uh, freedom-loving people in Iran or the religious groups in Pakistan, whether it's in Tibet, in uh, Mongolia, Inner Mongolia or North Korea and even in China, one thing is clear that authoritarian dictatorship is the same. It uh, discriminates against people, violates their rights and executes political dissidents, tortures them and imprisons them in order to ensure its survival. Biz bir yerde otak Allah, bir lam üzümüzden halk emez, bütün dünyadaki köz yeşi ikvatkan, avazını dünyaya anlatan mavatkan, diktatörlerinin, diktatörlerinin azap okuduğu doçkili vatkan, her bir halkın ortak avazı buluşumuz gerek. So I'm proud to see so many of you are here, so together we all can voice, uh, become the voice for those voiceless around the world, uh, for those people who cannot dare to talk about the truth of the repressed, uh, re repressive regimes in their own countries. Gerb dünyası Amerika bizim özümüzden avazımızı çıkarışımızla prüstümüzle ve sorularını verdi. 
And uh, I'm glad that in the Western countries, whether in the US or in other parts of the world, we can speak the truth without fear. So it's critically important for uh, those of us who are now free in this uh, great Western democracies uh, to champion the rights of not only our own peoples, but all those who are being oppressed around the world. And it's my belief that we, as long as we continue to struggle hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, for our democracy and freedom, we will win. Even though today, maybe many authoritarian states, dictatorial countries look powerful, strong, uh, they can do more evil against good, but still, it's my belief, firm belief, that we will be victorious. And it's, uh, history ha is a great proof that good has overcome evil, and democracy has overcome dictatorship. And I do not believe any dictatorship can achieve its own evil end in this world. And and uh, I do not speak English, therefore my colleague Aline, which is me, uh, will read uh, Ms. Kadir's statement. And, uh, but I will continue to struggle for all the oppressed, uh, because I owe so much for those who saved my life and those uh, under authoritarian countries' brutal rule. Until uh, my last breath, I'll fight for freedom and human dignity and a democracy. And uh, I will just read Ms. Kadir's official written statement. It's not too long. And we also have a PowerPoint presentation which go together with this. Some of the images may be graphic due to the brutality of the Chinese security forces against peaceful Uyghurs. <coughs> Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow human rights activists, uh, honorable guests. Uh, it's truly my honor to be here today uh, to speak before you. I would like to thank you and watch and all the organizers of the event today uh, where the voice of the press can be heard. It's truly humbling to be amongst such courageous and dedicated people. As world leaders gather today at UN to discuss global affairs, it's extremely timely and important for us to focus uh, on human rights, often ignored by UN and by a lot of these countries, such as China. I believe it's immoral for states that violate human rights, such as China, to sit on human rights, UN Human Rights Council and to pass judgments and even justify their human rights violations against peace-loving peoples, such as the Uyghurs, Tibetans, and the Han Chinese, and the other countries around the world as well. And my people, as many of you know, are the Uyghur people. Our homeland is East Turkestan. We have been under uh, Chinese communist rule since 1949. After that, the Chinese communists renamed our country from East Turkestan to Xinjiang, which means new territory in the Chinese language. Uh, and after that, the Chinese government promised, made us a lot, of, gave us a lot of promise, such as self-determination, which never came true. In 60 years since 1949, we have lost all of our, our rights, including the right to speak freely, the right to publish, the right to preserve our own culture, the right to speak the truth of our own history. We have lost the power to prosper, to gain an education in our own language, and the Chinese government has even banned our right to give birth. 
The Chinese communists, like other authoritarian countries, have always been ready to kill uh, the peaceful protesters, whether they are Uyghurs, Tibetans, or the Han Chinese. It was the same on June 4, 1989, when the Chinese students took to streets in Beijing to demand democracy and human rights. It was the same when the Tibetans took to streets in March 2008. It was the same when the Uyghurs took to streets to demand their rights on July 5, 2009. In fact, one massacre after another defines the over 60 years rule of the Chinese Communist Party in China, in Tibet, and East Turkestan. On July 5, 2009, young Uyghurs peacefully demonstrate in the regional capital, Urumqi, against increasing political, cultural, and religious repression, as well as social marginalization by the Chinese government. Instead of listening to the demonstrators, the Chinese government sent in security forces, fully armed security forces, began to shoot and to kill them, and killed hundreds of these uh, Uyghurs. Tens of thousands of, were arrested. Since then, torture, sham trials, harsh sentencing, and execution have been the response of the government to the legitimate demands of the Uyghur people. Uh, the crackdown has been in place for the past two years, and the situation is not getting any better. And uh, China also places high constraints on the Uyghur people's religious freedom, and the situation in East Turkestan is particularly controlled, especially after 9-11, uh, since Uyghurs are Muslims. In an attempt to label Uyghurs as terrorists in the era of the global war and te on terror, Chinese government used the Uyghur people's Islamic faith as a pretext to conflate peaceful dissent with terrorism. Since 9-11, thousands of Uyghurs were executed. Tens of thousands of Uyghurs were uh, imprisoned and sentenced by the Chinese government on alleged terrorism charges. Just a week ago, China sentenced four Uyghurs to death. And as a result of this cynical policy, religious discrimination in East Turkestan runs as deep. And we believe since 1949, more than one million Uyghurs have been killed by the Chinese government under different labels in different political purges and campaigns. For decades, the Uyghur people have watched the Chinese government to destroy the very fabric of the Uyghur society and culture through official policies. One policy is a forceful recruitment of the young Uyghur women into eastern Chinese provinces and cities to work as cheap, uh, even slave labor. So far, more than 400,000 of these young women have been transferred out of East Turkestan into China's eastern province. Chinese authorities also banned the use of the Uyghur language in schools from kindergarten all the way to college. So they are implementing a monolingual Chinese language education system and fired all the Uyghur teachers and professors who could not teach the very same subjects in the Chinese language. Job discrimination is rampant. Uyghurs are not hired in almost all sectors, in public and private. And uh, Uyghurs need not apply. Only Chinese wanted are everywhere in their job announcements. The frustrations that came to the fore on July 5 were in part due to the impossibility of the Uyghurs to speak freely so they can participate in determining the direction of their lives and their future. Uh, the Chinese government uh, harshly cracked down on the Uyghurs and imprisoned uh, hundreds of Uyghur journalists, web bloggers, and writers for simply exercising their rights, their freedom of speech. The government also hides behind charges of endangering state security, and splitism, and terrorism, and punishing Uyghur voices. But the simple truth is that whenever Uyghurs con contradict the official narrative stating the benevolence of the Chinese Communist Party, they're severely punished. Uyghur dissent has effectively been criminalized. I have experienced firsthand the repression of the Uyghurs through my own imprisonment and imprisonment of my two sons, Alim and Abdikim. Alim and Abdikim are currently serving lengthy prison sentences in China in clear retaliation for my international human rights advocacy. There are reports that they have been tortured and also my other children and grandchildren are being put under house arrest now by the Chinese authorities. As a businesswoman and a philanthropist in East Turkestan, uh, I witnessed the slow eradication of my people's religion, language, and identity. I try to help my people 
uh, within the Chinese system. But in a speech that I delivered in 1997 as delegate to China's political uh, people's consultative conference in Beijing, I laid out some of the most pressing problems facing the Uyghur population. But after that, the Chinese government uh, was not happy with me and, of course, uh, put me in prison, sentenced me to eight years in prison and put me in prison from 1999 to 2005. In prison, I was solitarily confined for the first two years and I was forced to watch the torture of fellow Uyghur prisoners there. Without the support of Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and other NGOs and the Western governments, I would have been dead in that Chinese prison. When I was released from prison and allowed to come to the U.S. in 2005, I tasted freedom for the first time. Before I was allowed to board the plane bound for the U.S., the Chinese authorities told me that I would not be allowed to speak about human rights once I was in the U.S. They believed that they had the right to control my voice even outside of China. I believe they also underestimate the power that one human voice can have when it speaks truth to power and when it's not constrained by the binds of the repress, repressive government. My dream today for China is for the Chinese government to embrace democracy and freedom and respect the human rights of all Uyghurs, Tibetans, Han Chinese and Mongols. And my dream for the Uyghur people is for a negotiated settlement on the future status of East Turkestan. And we all, under Chinese Communist rule, have long dreamed to a day of breathing the fresh air of freedom and a democracy. To achieve that, I believe the Chinese government should end its aggressive policy in East Turkestan in marginalizing, uh, colonizing, repressing, and assimilating the Uyghur people especially the aggressive policy of monolingual education, imprisoning peaceful dissenters such as me, and uh, also end its uh, policies diluting our culture, uh, distorting our history, and uh, the government also should stop it is cultural genocide against the Uyghur people because we are who we are and we don't want to change. And I believe the time has come for the Chinese government to reform its failed policies not only in East Turkestan and Tibet, but also in all of China. The time has come for China to embrace truly human rights, democracy, and freedom. Only then China will become a respect member of the international community. Thank you very much. Thank you.